after the boomerang has finished gluing, um, it's time to test it to see if it works. If it doesn't work, then there's no point in painting it. So make sure you test it before you paint it. The reason that you want to paint a boomerang is if the grass is wet or something like that and it falls on the ground and it, if it gets wet the wood will start to expand and uh, it starts falling apart and it just doesn't last as long. Um, the paint also makes it look good. Okay. The first thing you want to do is to use primer. Now primer is just a gray paint and what it does is it fills in all the pores of the wood and makes it so that the that the real paint later on can be applied with a much better finish. If you look at the difference between these two boomerangs, this one, even though it does look okay, the student didn't use primer. This one, the primer was used. You can see that the one with primer has a much shinier finish to it. And so if you want that shiny gloss look to it, you need to use primer. After you use the primer, you want to quickly sand it with a really fine piece of sandpaper and then paint it with the other spray paint. You can put two colors of spray paint on and then when the boomerang is spinning, you will see rings of color. Let's say you wanted a black boomerang with yellow stripes. The first thing you would do would be to paint the entire boomerang yellow. And then wherever you want yellow to stay, you would put down pieces of tape. Then you'd be able to take the spray paint and spray paint it black. Then after the paint dries, you can take the tape off and you will have your yellow stripes. Right, this is where we're going to be painting the boomerangs. What I have here is a table or a turntable that has been um, filled full of screws and if you look each time we paint a little bit of paint gets on the screws and it slowly builds up and builds up kind of like in a cave uh, with stalactites and stalagmites so kind of a cool look there we paint on this because it makes it so that the uh, whatever we're painting doesn't get stuck to the ground or and, and it makes it easier to pick up the part after it's been painted to allow somebody else to come in and paint right after. Okay now it's time to start painting. Again make sure you use primer. Here's the primer and make sure you've sanded it all the way till it's nice and smooth because once once you put paint on there, it's a lot harder to go back and sand out any defects. So make sure everything's to your liking before you put any paint on there. All right. On the on the can itself, the directions say to make sure you're uh, one foot away from whatever you're spraying. And make sure when you're spraying, you don't just point it right at it. You want to start spraying when you're off of the project, and then work your way onto it. Um, don't ever start or stop while you're on top of it because that's what causes a puddle of paint to accumulate and then it starts dripping and running and it looks bad. So make sure you're not starting right in the middle of the project. Start off of it and then work your way onto it. Okay, make sure you shake it really well too as well. Up and down and then circles. Make sure that the little ball inside of the can goes everywhere.
pulling all the fumes out of the paint room. Um, make sure that as you're spraying that you keep moving. Don't put too much on. I'd rather you put, put a little bit on and then wait for it to dry and then put another coat on rather than trying to put so much paint on there that it just starts running off and dripping everywhere. As you can see the painting process takes quite a while and uh, while you're waiting for it to dry, which is basically a whole class period, you're going to have to wait till the next day. Other people need to get in to paint their project as well. Uh, make sure you get your fingers underneath the boomerang so you don't get paint on you and then and carry it out until it's dry enough to you know, paint the bottom. Okay, This will take quite a while to do this so you'll be working on other projects at the same time. If you look at the boomerang it has the flat side on the bottom and the curved side that we spent all our work on on the top. Okay, Now when you're throwing the boomerang you want it to be almost perfectly straight up and down with the curved side towards the inside as a turn as it's coming around towards you. When you throw it you want to hold it like this so that when you when you throw it you want to put a lot of spin on it. The spin is what gives the wing profile the lift that it needs to come back around towards you. So remember to keep it straight up and down. If, if anything you tilt it just slightly to the right. Now if you're left handed you're going to do the same thing but tilt it slightly to the left and no matter what right or left handed you want the the curved side to be towards you on the inside. And again lots of spin and you want to throw it slightly up at a 15 degree angle. If you throw it straight forward it might not have enough uh, to come back around towards you. So we're going to go outside and, and show this technique really quick.